Hey guys, welcome back to another new video. Basically my stream deck updated today and I completely forgot that it has a soundboard function now. But I noticed in the patch notes today that it now supports looping, so... I figured what would make a better video than trying to turn this thing into a launch pad. Now I only started messing with this idea about an hour ago, so everything's not exactly perfect yet. But I'm just going to show you guys what I figured out, how simple it is to set this up. And it's just something to kind of have fun with. So basically all you have to do is, I had the stock layout right here, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to pull over some play audio tabs. Just going to fill the whole thing up. Now you can create a folder and stick audio tabs inside of there. That's the thing that you can do too. And then the stop audio stops all audio that's playing. So if you have something set for a loop or you just have it playing out really long, you can hit the stop audio and it'll stop everything that's playing. But I'm just going to go ahead and fill all this up because I kind of have an idea of something that I want to do with this. And basically all you have to do is click on the one that you want. I'm going to click on this. It's going to open a file explorer. And it already has what I want open. This is actually a remix by Carl Rag. He did it for the launch pad a really long time ago. I'll link the original video down in the description if you guys want to check that out. But basically I just want to kind of use samples for this because I know it on the launch pad. Just to kind of screw with it on this and see how it turns out. So I'm just going to load in each sample. All right, now that I have all that loaded in, I actually got rid of that stop audio just because I don't plan on using that. You guys can use that if you want. But basically what I'm gonna do now is go over to every single sample and go down to here. And I'm gonna put play overlap just so that way I can play it multiple times because if I do play stop, like this one's set for play stop right now. I can't like hit it really fast and have it like keep playing. To whereas like that one, I can keep hitting it and it'll keep playing over top of itself. So let me just do that real quick. Now you can do play restart, but I mean, I guess it's kind of cool. It could be kind of useful for some things. You also have loop, stop and start. I'm going to mess with that in a little bit. For the idea that I got now, I'm just going to put everything on overlap. Now you might also notice that you can change the volume for each one of these clips, which I find that pretty handy. But anyways, basically, this is what I got. All right, while it's cool and everything that we can set up like preset sounds that are all made to kind of go into a song, uh, let's see what we can do with just putting in some like random kick snare and stuff like that and see what we can do with that. Now I just have it set up with a kick, a snare, and a hat, so. Now that's cool, but say if I wanted to like take the hat and like kind of loop it and see what this does. It seems like the looping is like really off. Like I don't know what kind of tempo that's playing it to. And I've noticed that like it all depends on the length of what the clip you have is. So say if I added in another loop. Let me just grab another hat. Alright, I grabbed an open hat. Just going to loop it. See how it's completely different speeds? This one actually seems more in time, and this one kind of... It seems like it kind of can't keep up because it's going so fast, so I find that really weird, but... As you can see, there's an obvious limitation to how fast the buttons can play. It's only registering kind of half the time I actually hit it. So that kind of sucks. The looping feature really needs some adjustments to it. Uh, you need to at least be able to like adjust like the tempo or something like that because 
that I don't think is cutting it. So obviously like the mushy buttons aren't really ideal for something like this. I mean, if you had like an actual launch pad, they're a lot more responsive. This almost feels like a membrane keyboard when you're pushing it in. So there's a lot of time between you actually pushing it and it releasing. And it just seems like if you spam it a little bit, it doesn't really keep up too great. Another weird thing that I found out is if you take the stream deck and say I hit the top row and the bottom row, any button I hit over here will now correspond to the top row for some reason. And you can't like double tap it like that. You can still hit the top row, but I have no idea why it like links it together. But yeah, so as a launch pad, I don't think it's perfect, but I think it's pretty cool that it's at least an option to like mess around with some stuff like this. Just throw up some sounds, make something, uh, just open up like OBS or something, record it, and then maybe fine tune it after that. It's definitely something fun to play with if you just want something in front of you to like mess around with samples or something like that. And I'm sure with like people doing stuff like this, they're going to improve it over time. They've actually made a ton of improvements to the Stream Deck since the day it came out. I feel like they add on more and more stuff every single day. So it could definitely get better in the future. The only thing that I don't think is going to get any better is the mushy buttons. I definitely don't think they're the greatest thing for this, but you know, some people can make it work. But anyways, that's all I got for you guys. I was just really excited about this. I wanted to show everybody how to do this so that way people can start messing with this, give people ideas for other things to do with this. But yeah, so if you like it, go ahead and leave a like on this video. If you disliked it, go ahead and leave a dislike. I don't really care. Uh, subscribe if you want more content like this, and I will see you guys next time.